Hello everyone, DC Eric here, and today I wanted to show you Glover running on Windows 10. Now a lot of people may not know this about me, but uh, I like to mess around and get old games to work on Windows 10, because there is compatibility issues. Uh, but that doesn't always say that my fixes will make the game 100% running on the system. There's always got to be at least one flaw. So there is a flaw with Glover and we'll get into that as I show you this video. Now this video may be really long so prepare. Okay so I got VirtualBox or sorry VMware you can use VirtualBox if you wish and I have a installed version of Windows XP Professional. I would suggest to either get a cracked version or you can use the, uh, you know, trial 30 days or whatever. And if you just want to get it, you know, for Glover. Anyways, um, I have Windows XP Professional installed. I do have many copies of it, but uh, yeah, the licensing uh, server is kind of broken. Anyways, Let's uh, load Windows XP, and from there, I will show you how to get Glover running on Windows 10. Well, the first thing I must say, uh, must go into is settings first, because the first thing you're going to want to do is add a network drive to your, your uh, current Windows 10 operating system. So under Options, we have to enable um, Shared Folders. And from there, you can add a specific uh, folder um, from your Windows 10 computer. So I just chose uh, my downloads folder um, on my Windows 10, and then I just press OK. And as you can see, it's in the background there. And make sure it is set to always enabled. Um, I did have some issues. Uh, with this running perfectly on Windows XP. Map as a network drive in Windows Guest so it can actually show up in your network. Okay, with all that said and done, let's press OK. Let's load Windows XP Professional and I'll show you what the network drive looks like on Windows XP. All right, so here we are. Windows XP is perfectly booted on my Windows 10 computer with VMware uh, VMware Workstation. So we go to My Computer. So just right-click and go to Explore, and then it'll pop up. Okay. So from there, a new fold, uh, well, a new folder Explorer will open, and from there, all you're going to want to do is click the Setup icon in this window. <clears throat> All right, so we press OK to begin the setup. Now, it shouldn't take too long if you've got a uh, SSD hard drive, but it may take longer with a mechanical drive. Mm -hmm. So um, it's already s installed on this version of Windows XP, but I'm just going to do it anyway. And there we go. So from here, we just wait for the files to install. As you can see, it takes no time at all. Okay, it doesn't matter to install DirectX because we're not actually running it from Windows XP. Okay, close that window there. And the next thing you're going to want to do is go to where you have installed Glover on your Windows XP machine. And then we want to copy the Glover folder. That's right, don't... Uh, copy the Hasbro folder, uh, copy the Glover folder which is located in the Hasbro Interactive folder. So then we go back to my computer and now this is where you load your network drive from your main Windows 10 uh, operating system. From here you're just going to want to paste it and yeah, there's already a folder in there. Just uh, for me, it's going to have that error. For you, it's just going to copy right over. So because I already have the Glover folder in the downloads. 
Okay, so make sure, yeah, to copy that folder, do not cut it or anything like that, because in the future, if you run across any issues, that will be there for you in the future, so you can go back and grab whatever file you may need. So from here, now we just exit out of that, and we shut down Windows XP. We can just minimize that and go on to the next step here. Okay, the next step is we're going to have to grab uh, the config file from this download at uh, skychase.zone glover slash pcfix.html. I may have said that link wrong, but I will have the link in the description below. But the reason why we got to transfer the config file from this uh, download is because the, the config from the copied folder will be detected as a... Um, installation error because we installed it from Windows XP. So we're just going to want to click the download button here. Now we're at Mediafire and we're just going to want to click download. Alright, so remember how I had copied the Glover folder to the network drive? We're going to want to copy that over to the local C drive. Make sure there is no like uh, folder within a folder just use the Glover folder that we have copied so we're just gonna yeah we, yeah just copy it and then we're gonna go right here and then we're gonna paste it within the C drive as you can see I already have it there I'm not gonna paste over it because I have started to play the game uh, and I don't want to redo that all right so now that you have copied the Glover folder to the local C drive you're going to want to open that download that we got and grab the config file. Now, as said, that's all you need from this folder. Do not use any other files because we're going to be using more up-to-date files. And copying other ones will not allow us to use the, the physical CD-ROM for videos. So, just open the Glover folder and then drop and drag the config file from the download and we're just going to drop and drag it over here and replace it and remember the password was Glover and now it is pasted from here the next step we're going to want to open that config file and select our, our graphics settings so you may get this uh, little information here just press more info and then run anyway and then press yes on the dialog box there. Okay, so from here, just go to the graphics tab and click 3D FX Voodoo chipset. No, we are not going to be using 3D FX. We are actually going to be using um, DirectX. So just press save and exit and now 3D FX will be used. All right, so at this current website here, we can get DG Voodoo 2. So all you're going to want to do is get the latest stable version under this dialog right here. So select DG Voodoo 2.74.1, uh, click on that, and the download should start. Now, of course, I already have it downloaded, so we're going to go on to the next step. All right, so for this next step, we're going to want to install DG Voodoo 2 into the Glover folder. So all you're going to want to do is drag over the dgvoodoo.conf and the dgvoodoocpl.exe file. We're just going to drop and drag it over to the Glover folder. And I'm not going to replace those files. They're already in there. I'm just going to skip these these files because I already have it in there. But for you, it should just copy right over. From there, we're going to go into the MS uh, folder, which includes the DirectX files we'll need to get DG Voodoo 2 working correctly. So from there, you're just going to want to grab these four files and drag them into the Glover folder, just like that. Uh, of course, I'll replace the files because that really doesn't mess with the config, but just drop and drag and it should go there for you, no problems. All right, so now we've got to open DG Voodoo uh, two and set up this to run with Glover. All right, so we're just going to double click.
click on DG Voodoo 2 or DG Voodoo CPL .exe. Um, you're going to also want to make sure that you have it set to the correct folder for it to run. Usually that's automatically set, but if not, under config folder, click add, and then go to the C drive, and then click lover, and then select folder, and done. All right, for the next step, select under appearance full screen if it's not selected already. Then select progressive scan line order, miscellaneous keep window aspect ratio, and of course capture mouse. So the next step here, we're going to want to go to the DirectX tab. Do not use Glide. I know I uh, selected 3DFX from the Glover config file, but for some reason uh, DirectX works perfectly fine. Anyways, under there, you can use the DG Voodoo Virtual 3D Accelerated card. That part doesn't really matter. VRAM is set to 256 megabytes. You could probably use lower than that, but uh, I think I had issues running it any higher than 256. Under texturing, make sure you have selected force anastropic to 16 times. These are actually settings you can select to whatever you want. You don't have to do that. So you can do app driven, whatever. But I, of course I want the game to look top notch. Under resolution, select 1920 by 1080. Of course, for those of you who have a 4K uh, monitor, you can select it to those higher resolutions. Unfortunately, I don't have that, and I am uncertain, uh, uncertain if this game is actually compatible with those higher resolutions. Under behavior, make sure that application controlled full screen windowed state is checkmarked. Disabled enter or disable enter alt enter to toggle screen state. And anti-aliasing, again, this is an option you can select whatever you want. I have it set to eight times. And next step, under miscellaneous, I have uh, Force V-Sync disabled because I'm using a G-Sync monitor. I don't think this really matters for this game because the game only runs at 20 frames per second. So you can have it selected if you don't have a G-Sync monitor. But uh, if, you, if you have a G-Sync doesn't matter. I have it disabled. I didn't see any screen tearing at all. It works perfectly good. I also have disabled the DG Voodoo watermark because, well, I know it works because the game just doesn't run in 1080p with a DG Voodoo 2. So next we're just going to want to click apply and from there we're going to want to test the game out. All right, so the next step we're going to double click Glover.exe. Hey, why? What's wrong with the, the FMV? That's right. So the, the common flaw with this game is the FMV sequences do not work. But there is a fix for that. So all we're going to want to do is open Task Manager and then close Glover and we're going to want to create a batch file. So all you're going to want to do is right click, go to new, and click on text document. Now what should pop up is the notepad. So we're going to double click on the new text document. And I'm going to exit out of this because I already have the file created. All right, so in the new text document, you're going to write this or type this command out cmd.exe slash c start slash affinity two, and then of course the name of the executable, and that'll be of course glover.exe. Now, of course, you see that the, the affinity type is set to two. Now, the game uh, has issues with running over four cores. Now this is mostly an issue with running FMV sequences as they were set to run at lower core settings back in of course 1998 or whenever this game was created. I can't really remember the year. Anyways, if you set the affinity to 1, 2, 3, or 4, it 
will load. Now, I have found that using one core actually makes the game run a little bit slower. Uh, 4 has the same issue. I believe 2 and 3 work better. Um, but that might be just me. Anyways, I have it set to 2, and you can set it to whatever you want if you prefer. So what we're going to do is now save this to the the Glover folder. So right in the root of Glover, uh, the Glover folder, we can name it whatever we want. My, I set it to Glover underscore 2021 because that's the year I have figured this out. Now we click on all files uh, because if you set it as a text document, then you're going to save it as a dot txt and that's not what we want to do. We want to create a batch file. So again, name it whatever you want, and then make sure that .bat is included, and click Save. I already have the file, so that's the reason why that popped up on the screen. I click Yes, and now we begin to run the game from the batch file. Ignore the Glover.exe altogether now. You're going to want to run the game from the Glover uh, batch file. So we're going to double click. And as you can see, the FMV sequence plays. Yeah, there was a little bit of a stutter there. That doesn't happen all the time. But of course, it has to load from the CD-ROM, so you might uh, expect a little bit of issues there. But as you can see, that works perfectly fine. So we're going to just escape and go to the main menu here and begin a new game. So we press any key. As you can see, the graphics are just wonderful in this game. I'm going to press the start button there. And I'm just going to select new game where JJJ is. And I can erase it. And I'm type in JJJ again. And select a normal game. All right, so here's the other flaw. This is one issue that I have not been able to fix. I have no clue why it doesn't work, but the FMV plays, but the audio breaks. Of course, you you heard the audio from the main intro of the game, and that worked, but that doesn't mean it's always going to work. So what I have found is the game, for some reason, automatically manages the volume for the game, it even does it while gameplay, but for some reason, it keeps it at a well enough level for the game to play, and you can hear it perfectly. But for FMV sequences, it seems to break, and I have no clue why that happens. So, yeah, you can watch the FMV sequences, but the audio is broken. So now we just go inside the game here, and look at those wonderful textures. They look great. Now I know this is an old game, it's dated graphics, but you know what? I just love the colors of these old games. And yes, the game runs at 20 frames per second, but you know what? It's not a big flaw. It actually it runs pretty darn good for an old game. You may see a little bit of, you know, ghosting from the textures and stuff like that, but all around the game was meant to be played at 20 frames per second, so it runs pretty darn good. So, as you can see, I'm actually using the Xbox One controller here. So that's another issue with this game. Yes, there's three issues. The game has issues running FMV sequences because of the, the cores, and then we have to use the controller emulation basically to run the game. We have to create a batch file for the game to run. I don't know. Maybe there's more than three. But anyways, for me to use a controller in the game, I have downloaded Joy to Key, and from there I have set, a, set up the config for Glover. Now this is pretty easy to do. All you do is double click on Glover, sorry, the config file within Glover and you go to the controller tab. From here, you're not going to want to use the, uh, or configure a controller because it just won't work. So just grab the keys that are displayed on the uh, 
the controller here. So move left is using the left arrow. Uh, so all the arrow keys are used for moving. And then you can see that Z is used for slap, jump, and A is used for throw, points, ETC. You just move those configurations to your joy to key and you'll be able to to uh, use a joystick uh, or Xbox One controller in the game. Of course I will include a download link to Joy to Key at the bottom of the or in the description and you'll be able to play the game. Alright now that we got everything set up now we're gonna want to begin the game. So we're gonna double click on that batch file that we just created as you can see, uh, yes, the FMV plays as I showed you earlier. We got the audio. Now, of course, we're going to create another new game. So we can start from the first level. I'm going to go to Start. And we're going to go to New Game. And select JJJJ again. And then call it JJJ again. And select Normal Mode, because I find easy, uh, well... Maybe it's, maybe it will not have all the stuff that we want. Maybe there's a good ending, bad ending. I don't know. But I'm just going to play it the way I want to play it. That's right, don't press anything during this little sequence here. It may take a little while for this nice castle to drag down, but the game will begin. Okay, there we go, now we can go. Alright. Now we go get the ball, which is right there. Grab that. And we go inside the cave. And a new level will be unlocked. Well, the first level, anyway. And there we go. And we're off. Now we begin our nice, fun adventure with Glover. I really don't know the story of this game. I mean, the video shows the wizard uh, getting knocked down and the whole world turning gloomy. And of course, yes, this bad guy has done it and we have to actually, you know, kill him. Now, I don't know what happens to the wizard, if he dies or not. He does fall into a big hole. So perhaps Glover is just by himself now? I don't know. Maybe the ending will get into that. So this is our wonderful little world in that that we have unlocked. You see the question mark, the explanation mark, ETC. Now, as far as I know, the explanation mark may be a boss, I believe. The question mark will be unlocked if you 100% all the levels. And that'll be easy to do. So here is the first level to Glover. And in the PS1 version, it is, well, the whole game's a lot different. So you usually would see the extra life right here, and it's not there, because the side of the level is not present. But here's the extra life in the PC version. Now, another flaw I have seen, and I don't know why this happens, but the audio cuts off at some point and is not looped. Uh, I don't know if that's normal or not, but... Uh, yeah, you're going to have to deal with that. The game is 100% playable at this point, as far as I could get it. And I didn't mean to throw the ball there, but we did. Okay. Yeah, it's very hard to, you know, keep a jump in. Because sometimes you end up throwing the ball. So, there we go, and uh, yeah, I didn't mean to do that. Just gonna get off that, grab these cards at the side because they're very hard to get with the ball. Okay, I grabbed it. And there we go. Now we get on the ball again. And we let go of it. Just slam into that bowl. And here's another thing uh, if you change into the diamond, it actually gives you more points. It doubles it. So you can see there, two times, or times two, it will tr double your score. But doing so, if you leave that, if you leave the diamond, it will actually transport you back 
to the last checkpoint. And uh, from what I believe, that actually uh, makes you lose a life. So we're going to have to put it right back to the normal ball. As you can see, I did leave it, but I left it just in time that I could grab the ball and it wouldn't transport me back. Okay, so we did that, and now we grab the ball here, and we go up here, and there's a checkpoint right there, so you're going to want to do is jump into it, and there you go. Now the PlayStation 1 version is a lot different for this uh, hidden, uh, where you get the hidden little card here, but in the PC version, and maybe the N64 version, all you do is jump into this pole, and it falls over. So we get that extra life. Oh, but I believe I can actually get that by doing this. Actually, no. That's right. I think you just jump onto the pole there. There we go. Yeah, that's how you do it. And... Like I said, you move backwards when you're in the water. So there's that. I could jump to get uh, extra points here. Maybe I'll show you that. Like I said, it's it's really difficult, the platforming in this game. And uh, if I can remember correctly, this game didn't really sell all that well. They were going to make a second, and uh, it didn't work out, if I can remember correctly. So keep pressing. Oh, there we go. I did it. Okay. Yeah, hold on to that ball. There we go. I actually did it. Awesome. Okay. So we're now at the end of level one. Doesn't matter if you get the ball in the water because there's a nice little ramp here. If I can actually get up it. Yay! There we go. And we can grab the card here. And grab the key there. And here. Okay. So the other way of getting this to work correctly... Okay, that didn't work. Yeah, you want to do a jump. But you want to be able to make sure that you're aiming in a correct placement. And that's not what I wanted to do, but hey, that card was easy to get. So we're going to jump again. Whoops. Okay. There we go. I'm going to go get that again. jump again. As you can see, there's a little shadow there. It's basically showing you where where the uh, floating icon is, or card, or whatever I keep calling it. There we go. Game, or sorry, level one is aced. Then all we want to do is slam on that. But of course I want to get that extra life that you can see there. And that shouldn't be too hard to get. All I gotta do is jump. There we go. There we go. Ten extra lives. Level one is done. And there you go. And there's some music again. And again, the game is as playable as I possibly can get it. And now you can play it as well. So there you go. Music is playing again, but it will eventually stop, as far as I know. So we're just going to exit out of there. We're going to quit the game. And press escape. And there you go. Alright, so that's Glover for Windows PC. 
Yeah, there's compatibility issues, but I would say minus the FMV and audio issues, the game is pretty playable and it is pretty fun. So you can get the enjoyment out of Glover on Windows with better graphics settings. And actually these graphics settings, as far as I know, you couldn't get anything that good back in, you know, the later 90s. So you're getting the best out of this setup. There is another way of getting the game to run without the FMV sequences, but sadly, you won't get any uh, music at all. So if you don't care about that, then you can just open from that download we grabbed from Sky Chase's website, other, uh, otherwise known as uh, Donut Grind or Andy. You can grab the data folder and the Glover executable and then you can drag those to your Glover root and the game will play without a CD, no physical. Then you don't get any FMV sequences and again, no audio. But the game will be perfectly playable and there you go. You won't have any issues there. So this is my way of getting Glover to run with the FMV sequences and the audio straight from the physical disc. Um, and I would believe this is the better way to play. The PS1 version, uh, yeah, it has its own issues because, of course, you know, it, it was an older console, so compared to PC, you're not getting the best of the best from it. N64, I believe it played like the PC version. I never really played it, but those... I did see some videos where things were kind of identical. So, yeah, the... The best route, I would say, is the PC or N64 version. Uh, and as for now, that's basically all I have for this video. If you like what you've seen, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. And yeah, I really hope you enjoy playing Clever on Windows 10. Thank you, and goodbye.